Tiverton Budget Committee meeting on uh, February 8th, 2018, 7.05 p.m. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. And our secretary is absent tonight. He has uh, other obligations that's taken his attention. So uh, Ms. Janik will take the role and she'll also be doing the minutes. Mr. Cody? Mr. Edwards? Here. Ms. Hollenbach? Present. Mr. McNally? Present. Mr. Leonard? Present. Ms. Janik is here. Mr. Paul? Present. Katz? Mr. Katz? Here. Absent noted, Ms. Rashley, Mr. Dakotas, and Ms. Jocelyn. Okay. Uh, the first thing on the agenda <laughs> uh, after the roll call is an opportunity for any public comment. Um, so is there anyone in the audience? And I will, will read the ground rules for public comment. Um, members of the public can address the Budget Committee on issues related to Tiverton fiscal year 1819 financial matters on the current posted agenda. Each speaker will get three minutes to address the Budget Committee. Members of the public are welcome to submit written comments about issues related to the 1819 budget. So the posted agenda tonight has to do with the Department of Public Works. So that would be what would be uh, in order for public comments. So Mrs. Cook. Uh, Donna Cook, I just want to ask a question since the, maybe the minutes of the meeting from last week would be part of the agenda. I just wanted to to speak on one thing that came up last week out of the charter. Um, well, if I'm permitted, the ground rules we wrote it, we voted on. We, we only speak on the current agenda. But there was something not quite right with what happened last week. But that's not on the agenda tonight. I understand what you're saying. It's not past history, although it is last week, but it has to do going with going forward. All I can say is by the rules that we adopted, that would not be an appropriate comment. I understand, Mr. Chairman, but it's a little restrictive considering they didn't go by the charter last week when they made some type of a decision. I, there's, I don't know. I wasn't here. I understand and I don't that, know that, but there was anything to do with the charter. But, but it uh, did. It. I, I'm just trying to say that they they need to understand that they need to go by the charter when they make a decision. I. I think everybody on the committee understands that. But they didn't understand that. Well, I can't speak for everybody, um, so I think that. Mr. You're Chairman. not in order, so if you just please take your seat, I would appreciate it. Mr. Chairman, it. in light of the fact that you weren't here, I think it would be, and it's charter related, I don't see that there's any, and it's going, she says it has to do with going forward. I don't see any reason not to let her talk. Has it, has it like one minute thing? I mean, it's not, it's not no. to disparage anyone, it's just. If it's charter violation, I feel like we should hear it. That's well, what I'm thinking. There, now, this is not the forum to hear a charter violation. If there's a feeling there's a charter violation, there's a process. I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to prevent it. That's all. Okay. Maybe if we don't go forward. Okay. I'm I'm operating on the guidelines that were voted on by this committee for public comment. That's that's what we said we were going to do. So, if you please be seated so we can proceed, I would appreciate it. 
It's my very last disappointing. Effort. My last effort is I really don't want to be responsible for a charter violation. No, so just like Mr. Chairman, may I make a motion to amend the, the rules on the agenda to allow this one comment subject to the, the normal three minute limit? Uh, you certainly can make a motion. Right, so moved. Second. Do I hear a second? I second it. Okay. Any discussion? All in favor of adopting that change? Two opposed? So, get that. Yes, I voted against. Well, and uh, Alex abstained. I, I just like to draw a contrast to last year where there was all this talk about not letting the public speak. <coughs> this is a very narrow exception and absolutely nobody voted for it, but with myself, I think that's shocking. Yep. Let the record stand. But that's, that's what has been adopted. It wasn't my choice. That'll go in the newspaper. Okay. You did have a choice to amend that for this particular instance. Yes. Okay. Um, Donna, I would like to just let you know that you can submit things in writing to the B budget committee also. Okay. So if you want to submit it in writing. Yes, we've, we've read that. So okay. let's move along to Mr. Anderson and his presentation. All right, thank you. Um, so I was going to, um, I don't know how you wanted to. I know at the, when we did the tour at the facility, you asked someone asked if I could put a quick PowerPoint presentation together. The screen's not working. I can't connect to the, uh, so I will try and um, I, I passed out the presentation. I just want to go through really what my presentation covers is more capital related paving, rat, paving prospects of what I put into the budget. Um, it does not really, I don't go into detail on the operational side, but we can talk about that afterwards. Um, so uh, with that, I'll, I'll try and go through it quickly. Okay, before you start, I will sure. note that I handed out a additional sheet entitled uh, DPW Capital Budget Needs, and then also another sheet um, having to do with pavement, pavement upgrade schedule. So the committee has all of those. One more thing, too. That's okay, Mr. Chairman. That's the data, right? Some of the stuff I'm going to talk about. for generous in there. So let's see if I wish you could see, see these, but all right. Um, all right, so they're really the second uh, the second slide talks about the work the present workforce at DPW, just to kind of, kind of give the, the budget committee an understanding of what what who works at DPW and what do I have. I've got 15 employees, two of which are uh, maintenance personnel. I have one one and a half mechanics, actually one and a half mechanics. I have one administrative assistant, I have a foreman, a lead operator, one mechanic, um, four operator truck drivers, and one strictly a truck driver. Um, I have a landfill operator and a landfill attendant. That makes up the 15 personnel work, work stuff. Why am I starting with this slide? Because in a minute I'm gonna show you what the surrounding communities around us have is equivalent to us, so you kind of get an understanding of where Tiburon and Bulls in relation to Middletown, Portsmouth, Barrington, and um, I did a, uh, did a little analysis between Barrington and Warren just to kind of give where do we stand in the whole mix of things. Um, just before I do that, the third slide shows basically how, how my department's broken down. We have the highway division, which is responsible for the snow plowing, roadway and maintenance repair, grass cutting um, and maintenance, drainage system repairs and maintenance, um, and any project related construction activities. We have the landfill division, which falls into me, which is basically two personnel. We operate the landfill, we drop rate the resident, we uh, we operate the residential drop-off area. We're dealing, I'm dealing right now with the client for closure activities, um, and I'm also overseeing the uh, trash contractor that does curbside with the, for the town. My equipment maintenance division, again, that's one and a half, mechan one and a half mechanics. Um, we take care of all the DPW fleet. We take care of all the fire department fleet, um, and we do, and also the, any, any repairs that have to be done on other departments, such as School committee, school department, we take care of their, their plow vehicles and, and we take care of the, the senior bus, we take care of anything to do but police. So any other, any equipment in town comes to our garage, not, not including the police vehicles. 
The building maintenance division is really two personnel, and they're really more maintenance for general repairs, general maintenance, general cleanup. Um, trash removal at all the town facilities and park areas, and all they take care of all the buildings with the exception with the exception of the library, they do pick up the trash there, but they don't do any, any internal maintenance there. And, and then as far as my other roles, I also serve as the town engineer, which I deal with all with the, with the planning and, and subdivision review. Um, I do also all, all the individual lot stuff, working with the building official, and all the, I am the designated erosion control officer for the town. So working with the chart I handed out um, for all the different, different uh, towns, so we, I basically, between myself and my assistant, we called Tiverton, I'm sorry, we called Bristol, Middletown, Portsmouth, Warren, and we did some averages. So my first chart basically shows that when you're looking at total miles in the town, how many mechanics each town has, the size of the road, the, the road crew for each town, and, and the total workforce, we're pretty much at the bottom of all, all the lists. So for workforce, we have 12, Bristol is 33, Middletown is 17, Portsmouth has 19, Warren has 20. Road crew wise, we only, again, we have nine. Uh, nine for that work in the road crew of my department, whereas Bristol is 28, 16, 12, 13, 17. The mechanics, we have one and a half. Everyone else pretty much has two. Uh, town miles, we have, we're probably up the, near the high, not the highest, obviously, Portsmouth has 110, but just to give an idea of how many miles we have to plow in relation to what the other towns do. And then private miles are roads that we do that are private roads, but we have to plow and sand. Um, and, and, and again, tw uh, Portsmouth has about 22 miles. We have about 15. Bristol has none. Um, and then town plow drivers. We have nine. Nine plows, nine drivers. 28, Bristol has 28. Portsmouth, Middletown has 16. Uh, Portsmouth has 14. Warren has 13. And, and the average is about 18. Um, and then private snow, snow drivers. We have nine plows, small plows, pickup size. We hire as, as third-party con contractors. The other towns don't have as many. Bristol has five, um, and Warren has four, and, but the rest of them do not really have anything, uh, only because they employ their own drivers and they have more plows. So again, I'm just trying to do a comparison showing where Tiverton <laughs> falls, and we're pretty much on the lower end of most of it. Um, my next chart basically shows town plows versus town roadways. Um, we have nine, again, the, I have the, the uh, town separated into nine routes, nine plows. Um, nine plows, 82 miles. Bristol has 28 plows, they have 88 miles. Middletown has 16 plows, they have 80 miles. So, you know, and, and we can keep going. Portsmouth has 14, 110. Warren has 13, <coughs> and has 52. Just to kind of give you an idea, of, you know, we have a, nine plows and we're taking care of 80, 82 miles of roadway. The, the chart on the right basically shows paving budgets. These are estimated average paving budgets that the town, other towns have. I think last year we had 245,000 was in my budget. Um, other towns have around 800,000. Um, let's see, Bristol has 800,000, Middletown has 650, Portsmouth's 850, and this is their average, and Warren is about half a million dollars a year. Just to give you, an, again, a, a better understanding or an idea of what other towns around us are doing to repair their roads in Britain and things. Um, my next slide is basically showing you the equipment by year. Um, just to kind of give you a, an idea. Oh, Mr. Chairman, are, should we ask questions as he goes or at the end? I'm just curious, is there, in general, in public works and with road maintenance and plowing and such, is there a difference depending on the, the density of the population? I don't think so. Again, it's, I really think it depends on the amount of roads and the amount of roads you have to handle and the amount of roads you have to plow. Um, at least what I find, you know, again, from, from talking to the other directors, they, their number of plows, that they, that's what they feel they need to do the amount of roads they have to cover. Um, we have nine, so we have to split our nine out by the amount of miles we have to cover. Each one of my plow drivers does roughly between 10 and 12 miles. One has a little less depending on hill size, one and, and a couple of the other trucks have a little bit more, but it, I try to average it out so every plow driver our, or every employee, nine of them, have the roughly the same amount of, they have to sand, salt, or plow every time. So there aren't efficiencies or anything if you're dealing with long stretches of more rural roads versus, say, Warren or Bristol, where there are a lot of smaller roads with more traffic? You, I'm not going to go. Uh, again, we have, I mean, we have two different parts of this, this, this town, if I look at it. The northern side of town, which has a lot of small streets, a lot of hills, a lot of, a lot of tight intersections, things like that. And we have the, the rural part of town, I'm going to call it the southern end of town. Where it is more straightaways, 
but we have a lot of streets, small streets with no turnarounds that come off of those long straightaways. So it's kind of a mixture of both. But again, Northern Potter Town, well, yeah, I mean, that, was, that to me is, is more like a Warren or a Bristol. Southern Potter Town, probably more like a Portsmouth, open roads. Why do we plow on accepted roads? You know, I've been here a year, and I've been asking myself that same question. I mean, and, who tells and, you you have to? Um, from what I've been able to find out, this is something we've always done. This is something that past councils have said: you need to plow these roads. These are these are things. There are roads we plow in sand, and this plow and this roads, but these roads we don't maintain. So I have issues with that too, because there's roads in town that are crumbling, and yet and and causing damage to our plows, and yet that I'm I'm responsible to plow it. It's on my list of things to try and accomplish this year about getting things taken off list or added, li added to list or getting things accepted. I guess we had a road committee in, t in a number of years ago that didn't really solve a lot, uh, from what I understand. So there's a lot of there's a lot of gray area, and then I understand that as people went to the council, they got things added, and they got things you know, there there are there there are private roads we have to plow. I don't understand why, when there's homeowner associations that they can they pay money to and should be taking care of their roads. Okay? Yeah. All right. So equipment, just to give you everyone an understanding, because again, I, a lot of the phone calls I get um, from, from angry residents during snowstorms snow, snow and things is that I don't understand why it's taking so long to do these roads. When I look at your website, you got thanks to you got two Macs shown on the front cover and it looks great. Well that's two of our nine, that, two of our total 10 fleet, 10 being our, our 10 wheel dump truck that's in reserve. That's very big for our roads, so that's why that's the reserve truck if something happens. Um, just to give you an idea, we're running, right now we have two Ford L800, L8000s, 1992 vehicle plows. Those are my problematic plows right now. Those are the ones that break down a lot. Um, a lot more this year than they did the, for my last winter. I have two Fords LN 8000s in the same category. The problem with these Ford trucks, which I'll show in pictures in a minute, um, is they're old. We can't get parts for them. Ford doesn't make parts for them anymore. We're actually on eBay now looking for parts. The sanders that are on these vehicles, they don't make the sanders anymore. So we're fabricating parts for these things. They're, they're, they're past their useful life. They're, they're rusted. They're, they're, there's a lot of issues with them. These are the trucks that I'm looking to change out right now. These are the trucks that are going to are problematic for the fleet, and plus, I mean, they're they're over 30 years old. Um, the just to give you an idea on this table, so you will understand, anything that's underlined is used as a plow and sander. Anything that's not is just showing you the other equipment that we have at DPW and the age of it, or the year that it was purchased, or the year that we have it. The two freight liners that we purchased in 1999, I believe it or not, those are actually still good trucks. We're using them; they're fine. They're 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 maintained, and, and we're moving. So really, I have four trucks right now that are problematic for the department. The two freight liners, they're, they're again, they're 1999, but they're working, and, and and we maintain them, and they're doing okay. The other other, so we look at the ten, the Mac, the ten, dump truck that we bought in 01, ten wheeler. I have that as a yellow, fair condition. There's a, there's a legend up on top. Um, it's in, why I have it is a fair condition because right now in the budget under capital I have to replace the dump body. The dump body right now is rotting. It's a steel dump body. It's rotting. Um, it's again, it's from 2001. The body needs to replace. The cab, the, the, the cab, the frame, everything on that is fine. The body just needs to be replaced. So that's why that's under, under fair right now. And I have it fair because it, 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 there's an issue with it trying to go up right now to dump because the piston's going to go through the roof of it. Um, uh, let's see, the, the clamshell, the Mac clamshell, just so anyone understands the, that up in the top and the new Holland, uh, so I'm going to talk about that. The clamshell is something we refurbished. We took our old vacuum truck, took off the vacuum because it had more holes in it than Swiss cheese, mm -hmm. and they put a clamshell on it. And that's where we're using cleaner cash bases and keeping it in our, in our, in, inside of our, our RIPTIS permit and we're keeping it in compliance. Um, the Ford 350 dump truck, that's, that's in, in, in in poor condition right now. That's one of the trucks that has the only one of the trucks right now that we have a lift gate on. The motor's going. The transmission's starting to fail. It's not in my, it's not in my inventory. But if I get, if I, one of my requests, my requests right now that the council has has agreed with, is to replace two of our, our plows. However, my goal is not to just buy plows that sit and only get used during the wintertime and sit in a garage the rest of the year. I want I want trucks that can be used to as dump trucks 
be versatile. Therefore, we can take and, and in one of the trucks I'm going to show you right in a minute, the, there are existing 550 Ford, which we plow with, has a steel body that's also rotting off. And I have to replace, I'm asking to replace that this year. Um, the, the tailgate we'll put on that truck. So if this truck eventually, the 350 goes, we're not going to be down a truck. We'll actually be able to use the other new ones if we do happen to get them. Um, if I continue on the next slide, um, just to go through it. So the Ford 550 Super Duty, that's a smaller truck than, than what I'm asking for right now as part of the new ones from the capital program. I'm looking for a, uh, the Ford 650 or, or something equivalent in size. The 550 is an okay vehicle for our hills from like Lawton. It does Lawton over to uh, Riverside Drive. That kind of covers that area. It's, it's this very small roads that we just can't get our bigger plows into. The only issue, I, the only real issue with the Ford, the, the 550, it has a slide in sander and it doesn't have a lot, lot capacity. So it has to keep coming back to the yard to get filled with sand to go back up and continue on its route. Whereas our bigger plows, um, actually can stay out more, sand more and get more done and, and making fewer trips back to the yard to get so, sand and salt. Um, and then we have two, for a better, for a better term, a pickup truck size plows, the Ford 250, which right now is under repair because we had a little accident on Bismarck and one of the snowstorms this year. Um, and then the new truck, which is the Dodge Ram 3500 in the last column under two steps we bought last year for maintenance. We bought that with a plow, so that's gives us a little bit of the ability, again, they don't have sanders, but they give us the ability to take care of the fire station, the police stations, the library, the town hall, um, all of this, you know, the senior center, everything that we have to take care of as a facility. Um, the rest of the equipment, again, it's color coded. You can look at it later. Those that, so it, this is just gives you an idea of all the equipment that DPW has. Um, the age in which it, the year in which we bought it, so everyone kind of get an idea and see it. And if I'll go to the next page, um, you'll actually see the trucks. Um, oh, next page basically has a summary of all the, of just the trucks we use for um, plowing. Um, and it's color, it's color coded with it, with the other things so you can kind of see what's good and what's bad. Uh, what, so when we get to the pictures, it kind of gives you an idea of when you see it on the chart, you actually have the pictures. So we have two Macs um, in, the, in the top middle picture. That's, that's the two newest dump trucks we bought. And, 14 and 15. Our Ford utility truck, again, that's just for construction of this stuff. The lower picture corner there, that's the Mac 10 wheel dump truck. That's the spear vehicle right now. That's the truck that the body is riding out and the piston's going to go through it. Uh, that's the one that we need to replace. Our clamshell or the old vacuum truck that we converted to a clamshell. And then we just have our new Pelican sweeper and our John, De and our John Deere loader, which we helps us put the sand in the, into the plow trucks. The next page basically shows just giving an idea of equipment. The hot box, which was a pr great purchase this town ever made now. Again, being further away from the asphalt plants, we can go keep the asphalt hot when you get back here and do our road repairs as we need to. Um, dump load trailer that, that our maintenance department uses when it goes around and picks up all the, all the garbage at all the town parks, the facilities, the beaches, things like that. The Ford 350, this is the truck, the only truck we have right now with a tailgate, which is something that we uh, that we need. Um, this is something that, that, this is the truck that actually we, we got from the police on a drug seizure. Um, they, they gave it to us a number of years ago. Um, it's, 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 it's been almost past useful life again. It's going to need a motor. It's going to need a transmission. Uh, to put it into this truck, we may just probably shelve it, but that means that I have to buy a tailgate and put on my 550 truck so we'll have the ability to do what we need to do with a tailgate. To give you an idea, so the two Freightliner, uh, two Freightliners on, on the lower picture there, that's the two trucks that are in 1999. They do look old, but they actually run very well, and there's no issue. We're not having any issues really with those. The occasional pony motor will go. What's the po what's a pony motor? The pony motor is what runs the Sanders. Uh, that we have those issues all the time. Um, hopefully, the new trucks we're going to have is won't have pony motors. They'll be a hydraulic hooked up, hooked up to the truck themselves. The cat loader track loader is our dozer at the landfill right now that we run every day. The Ford 550 on the lower right corner, that's the uh, that's our small plow truck. That's the one that has a slide-in sander, as you can see, strapped down on the back. Uh, that's the truck that also has a, that if you kind of get under the truck and look up, you can kind of see through it in a lot of spots, and it's, it's pretty much had it. So we're, we, I'm looking to get that, that body replaced so that it becomes a truck and put the tailgate on that, the lift gate, I'm sorry, the lift gate that allows us to up and down motorized. 
just in, and then the last page kind of gives you just some more shots of our equipment from our backhoe, our, our backup dozer, our compressor. Again, the the roller we have, the other the, the, the we have two. Uh, there are two vehicles that we are operating in, at DPW that are hand-me-downs from the police. The, the 2010 Charger and there's another Dodge Charger that we have in the, in the yard as well. And then our chipper that's that's in the lower right hand corner and then the next page basically shows you the dodge ram 3500 this is the one that we bought that we got for maintenance it was proof 2016 it also has a plow hook up in the front so we can actually plow around and do what we need to do this replaced the grand marquee that the that the two maintenance people were driving around in that's now i think sitting as junk in my yard um, if i'm not mistaken next quick quickly shows um, the ten wheel dump body um, and it's, I kind of took some pictures of the rusting through couldn't really see up uh, the holes in it um, just showing you that's the old one I want the, with the new one on the right hand side and I said the similar with the one ton of the 550 is a one ton capacity with a lift gate kind of get sure the idea of that's what we're looking to buy just the back vent, just the back body not the whole the rest of the truck still works is fine and everything works on it uh, the last thing is, so the, the four, the next slide, the four trucks on the left, those are our oldest. Those are the 1992, 93 Nabisco trucks that we bought used, the town bought used, cut the frames, fitted them out, and put sanders on them, stainless steel sanders and, and <coughs> cloud blades that don't turn, they're set, they don't turn. They set, they turn to the right, they're set, they do it. The two with the, with the, with the lights on top, those are the 1992, the other two are the 1993 with the smaller lights on top, the smaller yellow light on top. What I want to replace two of these with is hopefully what you see on the right hand side, that's the Ford 650. Um, it will have a stainless steel sander on it and plow, which obviously is not shown here, but just to give you an idea of what, what the size of the truck we're looking for. It's bigger than the one ton, but smaller than the, the Mac that we bought. Again, they're, they're, these are roughly about, I got price quotes of $118,000 a piece. Uh, in 2015 and 14, I think we paid 225 a piece for the, just for each, each Mac. Which I, I again, the Macs are nice for long straightaways. I just don't think it's it's versatile enough for the, for what we need. The 650s, somewhat in the range of the internationals that we have. That's why I'm kind of leaning toward that. That though I'm still looking at talking international about what kind of price that they have for their trucks. Um, one of the problems we have, especially on the hills, which I think there's a picture here. Nope. I'll go. All right. Uh, I'll go back to that in a second. So one of the things is with the hills. The Macs are okay. They have. Um, they're okay. They're not great. I've watched this. I've watched the Max slide 100 feet down the hills. I'm afraid. Like there's a. Uh, let me see if I can get to the picture. The very last picture. No, I'm gonna get to it. I'll go. Sorry. I won't jump ahead. Real quick. Um, back. 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 Come on. Sorry. I'm jumping ahead. All right. So I'll continue with the presentation I put together. So is the hills. Um, I'm looking to get something with with lip, limited slip differential, a locking rear, rear differential, so the trucks will be able to the tires will grab go up the road instead of one tire spinning and not the other the other one doing nothing like we have right now none of our trucks are four by four with the exception of the 550 the current the, the one that needs a body um, one of the things the talk that came up during our discussion at the at the on that Saturday for the tour was ice problems and drainage problems um, and one of the reasons I'm here to hopefully ask you to combine the paving and the drainage budget into one budget um, so that I have the versatility to be able to make drainage repairs and, and pave things instead of just having no money for drainage and, and having money to pave, but it doesn't make sense to pave if the road needs to be fixed for drainage first. Um, so this is one of the issues on Quaker, you'll see. Um, I think we're out there every night when it's cold because there's water flowing down the road that's coming out of the hill that we can't do anything about. So, or, or we can't, we have to treat right now because the ground's frozen. So we have to send a gentleman out in the truck to sand and salt it, try and break the ice up, because we constantly get calls from the police and the fire. We, this isn't just one spot. There are loads of spots around town. My goal this summer and spring is to correct these issues. I've already corrected two. I want to correct these issues so we don't have to keep calling people in and over time to go out and do this. I don't know how many, again, this is, these, there are problem areas that have been happening around town forever. <coughs> um, I've only been here a year. I've identified a number of spots, and we're working to going to correct all of these. Some of these are, are caused by homeowners, which we've addressed in letters, and we're going to work with them. Other ones are just coming out on the road, coming up from the road, and we've got to just try and correct and fix. Um, okay, quickly. So paving. Um, I asked for a big number. So what I did was, was someone said to me, well, how much 
how bad are the roads in Tiverton? So I looked at, I, I went down and I, and I drove and I assessed every road in Tiverton, giving it a scale of one to five. One being nothing needs to be done, to five being we got to rip it out and put a brand new road in. Um, and I looked at it and I did the entire town and I took our prices from bids and said, okay, what would it cost if you had a five being total replacement, four needing an overlay, mill and pave? How much would it cost us to fix it? So I did a six-year budget. I came out to $3.4 million, which is roughly about $500,000 a year. Um, I broke it up based on our plow routes. Just to, not, not, you know, so I took all the five, anything that was a five and a four and a plow route, and of our nine routes, broke it up the whole town, and I tried to break it up so that it was somewhere in the range of five to $600,000 a year, which is a lot of money. I understand that. But it's just to give you, give everyone an understanding in town. Because I get a lot of phone calls that say, well, how come you're not doing my road? Or I see you're paving that road, why aren't you doing mine? So I have something I'm probably going to try and post. Again, it's, it's all dependent on, on how much funding is, is approved and finally and, and what the people want to want to do. But that gives you an idea of for the next six years of the problem loans we have right now to get them back to, to something that's realistic. Um, there are a lot of roads that just have binder on them. There's a lot of roads that were never finished. There's a lot of roads that I don't know. I don't know what happened in the past. Again, I just came here a year ago, but that's how I came up with my numbers, and that's how I came up with my schedule. And there is a, I believe, I gave the roads, and someone asked if I could put together the individual prices. The total price for the year, what everything adds up to, is on my capital budget for every year. <coughs> um, and then I have the next picture. Basically, shows you just kind of what we have for roads. Okay, this is. I just picked the one because it was in, in next year's budget, Ledger Lane. Why is Ledger Lane? Because I got 17 calls last year when we were doing North Brayton. Why wasn't Ledger Lane getting done? I didn't know how bad Ledger Lane was until I actually went out there. It's bad. There are, there, we have grass growing through it. We have, uh, there's maybe a half of inch of asphalt on it. It's, it's completely gone, needs to be completely ripped up and completely done right. Um, but that's one of, the, that's one of my, on my, on my, list of roads. So I took some pictures to kind of give you an idea how bad is it? Pothole Central, alligator cracking, it's a mess. It's falling apart. Um, other, t other streets in town, Ames Street, okay, that's the side of the road where it's all pretty much, you can't drive on it, it's, you see gravel underneath. Um, patches upon patches upon patches, rutting, um, it's, it's all such a thing. Bobbin Hill Road, when we were doing Nicholson Place and fixing that, Everyone on Bobby Hill Road was upset because I didn't get, why couldn't I do theirs? Half of their road is pretty much almost washed out. Okay, yes, is that on the, pl on the list? No, I'm trying to, again, again, work in areas, so I'm not having the, the contractor we hired running all over the town. I'm trying to concentrate, get it all done in one area, move to the next area the following year. If something comes up, we have to move it, we move it, but just, just the thought. Um, okay, so my next picture is one I was trying to explain earlier. So Horizon Drive, I don't know if everyone in town is familiar with that. Uh, Horizon Drive, I call it the Tiverton Ski Slope. I can't for the life of me understand how that road was ever put in and approved. Um, my, my, I actually took it, my son who helped me put this PowerPoint together looked at it and said, oh my God, where is that road? That's incredible. You, that's not real. It is. If you stand up the top, I understand the kids used to try and get air off of that and come down when their cars. Anyway. This road, just, just because I, why I show it is because we have a Mack plow this one, one of our newest vehicles. It actually slid 200 feet down the end. I thought I was glad it stopped before it went off the road into the, into the woods. Can't do much with ice, I know that, but that's just kind of idea of the steepness in these hills. Um, Bismarck, my other favorite road in town. Um, I only take this because I had $9,000 damage to my F-250 because it went down the road and completely spun out with the ice. And then trying to get it out and pull it back and put some sand down with one of the Max, <clears throat> the Max slid down 100 feet and went right into the side of my truck. I just have a question on that on that issue of sliding trucks. Um, I know that that you sometimes sand and salt before the icing occurs. Mm -hmm. So why can't that take care of some of this? We have. Okay. We ha we do we do. We do take, that does help help some, but when a lot of the hills on the northern side of town, we can't physically plow up the hills. They are too steep. The tire does not have, our trucks don't have limited slip or buttons on them that I can push to engage the rear wheels. You mean go down ahead of time? So they have, they do, they okay. have. We, they, they, we, on our trucks, I will have, with the exception of one, 
have center spinners. So they're actually sanding, they're running over the sand. So as they sand, the truck is actually going over that sand and salt so that it gives it some traction. It's still twisted and turned. I watch the truck back up and 10 feet and then slide 100 feet into a truck. On ice or sand? It was ice. It was ice that had sand on it. The, That's they how hadn't, bad it hadn't is. been sanded before the ice formed. So. It hit. It did. Mm -hmm. we hit, it was hit once. Then they were coming back after they hit all the other routes and went back to plow. And that's when it, when they started slipping and sliding all the way down the hill. So if there's not enough salt or sand, maybe it starts forming some more some more ice, and you have to increase the amount. Again, and on the hills, salt I don't know. is only good. And sand's only good. It's only going to work at a certain temperature. So if right. the temperature's down, it's not going to it's not going to do until you can get some heat and stuff. Okay, on the road. thanks. Right. We could have put yeah. Again, a lot of a lot of the DOTs right now is only using salt. They're not even using sand. I'd hate to try not to use sand in this town because of the hills we have. So we're using a 50-50 mix. Plus our sand and salt budget would have to go up if we went with pure salt here. Um, and then North Great Edge again, I just put it in and we just did that. Came out very nice. Um, so that's what the rest of the roads would look like if people wanted to know what their road was going to look like when it's done. Last, uh, second to last page, I think, is this gives you my idea or for my six-year planning on how I was going to pave. Um, again, by plow route, it's broken up by how I kind of have the town broken up by plow routes. But it gives you an idea of what roads are bad right now, how much it's going to cost based on our current bid prices um, to try and move forward. Um, again, whatever gets whatever money can be appropriated. If it's less, then I will adjust accordingly, and we'll have to keep pushing these down. Again, this is what's wrong with the problem roads now. In six years, more roads are going to be at that point. Again, the roads in Tiverton aren't the best. We get calls all the time on them. Um, and then the last one just gives you an idea of these are the roads, the Tivin and wastewater. I'm making them pave curb to curb. Uh, why? Because they're actually putting sewers in the roads. So I'm not going to be touching these roads. They're going to be paving them at their, at, at their cost. Will it be the whole road downhill or just yep. the face the curb to curb? There will not be a patch. When they're done, they're paving per face to face. I'm making them do it. So curb to curb. Um, yeah, because they're the last ones going to be in there. I'm going to go in there. It, depending on how much drainage money or if we, if we combine accounts, there are drainage fixes I have to do in these areas. I'm going to fix them now so that when, when Tiverton is done with their sewers, they pave it once and they have a new road and we shouldn't have to go back in there and do any work on them. Can I just ask a question? Sure. On um, some of those, they have a little parentheses with the O. The o that's an overlay. So in other words, they're <coughs> not completely gone where the base is rot, where where everything's buckled, where, is there, where everything is like there's no, I can actually mill an inch and a half out and put an inch and a half back down. Right? That's what the overlay means. And, and then so the others are like right yeah, down. The other layers will take out, we're going to take out all the pavement down at least, uh, our, our typical road section is four inches, two and a half inches of base, inch and a half of, of top. We'll take four or more depending on what we, what I see when they start taking it out get to some decent gravel, we'll go roll it, bring it back up, and then put the four inches of asphalt back. It's a lot more expensive. To do a, to do, to do a full, full depth replacement, yes. But again, the roads now, like there's, there's roads like, for instance, in William Barton, that we're stuck, the town's stuck with now, the developer went out of, out of business. Um, there's only binder down there, so I've got to try and fix some binder sections, and then we're going to have to pay to put the top coat on so we don't lose those roads entirely. That's on the list. It's William Barton and, and the roads up there. I want to fix the binder section in, in the areas that I have to, and then put the final top coat in. Just like when we put uh, Quintel in, when Quintel was done, the road to the middle school, that was only binder for years. So I had to get in there and put the top coat on it last year. So now that's complete. <coughs> so what is the budget road? Is it the one that's on the I don't know how many is it. Right, and, and there's a bunch of roads that I ripped out, and, and I have one road right now that has only binder on it. I didn't have the money, so I put binder down. It had to get fixed, but I will put that, I will patch that. It'll be the first thing we put the top on coming year. Binder for a year is fine. I mean, it happens in construction all the time. It's just you can't, if you start waiting two, three years, that's when you get traffic on it. It's going to degrade it. It's not thick enough to support the traffic. But we, there's a lot of town, roads in town that are just binder. They're not finished. Bill, when we, you look at these on the slide, we're laying it out by fiscal year. Yep. Most of these, that if unless they have an O, they're um, they're, they're so fives. 
there are five, so they're a complete, remove the pavement and redo it, correct. And then the estimates to come up with this, is this through a contractor that says per this is mile, um, and is it's, it? It's per square foot. So we pay, we pay so much a square foot for top, with the inch and a half, we pay so much a square foot for the two and a half inch base. Mm -hmm. And, and then we pay so much per square foot for milling and so much for reclaiming. So a reclaimer, when it goes in, it takes it all out. We pay so much for that. Reclaimer takes in and then leaves a base and they roll it back in. Milling just takes an inch and a half out. That's what you see when they go down 295 or 24, things like that. That's most of the time what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, is there any engineering that needs to take place on them in terms of drainage? Um, that's well. That's one of the things that I'm, I'm going to be doing. So, like, there's like, for instance, North Freight, and everyone kept telling me we we're going to redo it all, redo it all, redo it all. Well, after looking at it, there's nowhere for the water to go. So I didn't redo it all. We left. I put some inlets in it, in the edge, to get the water off the road, and I milled and paved it. It wasn't that bad, and I couldn't understand why everyone kept telling me it had to completely be replaced. So I wasn't going to waste money, the town's money, and and completely redo a road that I didn't think needed it, we needed to have get the water off the road, so we, we opened up some spots and took care of drainage, things like that. Again, a lot of the town, one of the things that I find odd is that a lot of the roads in town, I mean, they're, in the rural section, I understand, there's just no, there's no drainage structures. There's no way to collect the water. It's just, there's swales, and I'm putting a lot of swales in right now, and I'm trying to do things that, to take care of water problems. It's just, there's nothing to hook into. There's no drainage, so, Again, I'm, I'm, it, the worst thing for a road is to build it, we put curbing on it, and the water can't get off. If the water can't get off, it's going to eventually make the pay, pavement fail, and that's what we're seeing right now. So I, I'm, going, I'm going to be going around systematically and opening up roads to leave chutes, per se, so the water will get off the road. Yes, it might go into the wooded areas. I'm not going to obviously drain it into someone's yard so they're complaining. Well, yeah, I mean, that's, that's one of the reasons, like, for instance, Cynthia Avenue was a, was a hot topic before I got here. It's gravel. We, we, we just now, it's one of the roads that we grade every year. We don't, it's not paved, but we pay to grade it because it's a town road. I don't know why we're doing it again. It's one of those, there's a lot of things I still don't get why we do. Um, and that's, I'm going to try and get to the bottom of that, but that's a process. Um, but again, we, the, someone said we needed to pave it. Well, the council said no after they found out that we'd have to put drainage in because you couldn't just drain into people's yards, which is, you know, that's the problem. So we didn't pave it. We graded it. The council said no. But they're upset because they're still working in gravel and it hasn't been paved yet. So I'm, it's like I hear it. I get both ends. I know one road that was just done. And after it was all done, one of the big rainstorms, water coming right up to the river. Where's that? Yeah, Nicholson's an interesting, um, yeah, there is a stream, there is a spring that's off the edge of the road that's coming off the edge and it's running down. Yes, I see that now and I have that's something I'm going to have to address. But that's only got a binder section on it right now and that's why when I do Bob and Hill that will all get taken care of at once, that way there's no seams. That's where a lot of roads will go? There's a lot of roads that have springs. I, I cannot imagine the amount of water coming out of the roads this year. It's, it's, a, it's incredible. There's ice spots all over the place. There and people are, are seeing it because they're pumping out of their basements in sump pumps all, all, all out to the road. And that's what we're trying to stop. Quick question. Oh. <clears throat> On the bad drainage areas that cause the ice, mm -hmm. is there any way until it's handled you can put in some sort of temporary drainage, uh, go, uh, culverts, gullies, something, what are they called? So we've been, um, so we've actually taken, there were three spots on the northern side of Tiverton, um, scenic view, was one um, shoot scenic view? There's three spots: Albert Street, and there's another one. We actually fixed three of them, putting in sub drains along the edge of the road, and stopped the water from coming off the road and getting out of the road. So, we've corrected three of those spots. How much did they each cost? One was about four hundred dollars. One was about twelve hundred dollars. Again, it's it's somewhere between you know twelve hundred to four hundred. It all depends on what we have to do. Um, a lot of the spots, though, is I have to put in a structure, some kind of a structure on, that, on the side of the road where these people are pumping out of the road to give them, an, that I'm not doing the work for them, I'm just giving them a point to tie into, and they're going to have to pay to tie their drain, their pump, some pump, into the drain. Then it will be coming out of the road and causing these issues we have to keep responding to. That's my goal in the spring and the money. So that's why $5,000 was budgeted last year for drainage. Okay, so I spent, I've, I've spent in those three fixes $2,400. 
I still got more to do. Quaker is an expensive fix because there is no drainage there. The state was supposed to do it when they did the bridge, but that fell apart. Um, so I have to put in one, two, I'm going to have to put in at least three, three, three structures, some piping, and a portion of a subdrain to stop the water from going on the road so it corrects the problem. That's not going to be, but again, that's not, each basin's roughly about $1,000, $1,200. Then I got to buy the pipe, then I got that stone. So it's going to add up, it's going to be more than $5,000. So, so basin's not just um, drainage along the side of the road isn't going to fix it. It's just you need basins, actually. I need, like, in other words, the subdrains I have put in to correct Those are problems called are actually okay. tied in subdrains, a pipe in stone, oh, okay. below grade, mm -hmm. water from the service from that's coming out of the stone really the ground is actually getting into the trench that pipe is tied to a drain that pipe is tied to a structure that's nearby I don't have the luxury of that everywhere so I've got to try and put that in again there are sites that I can add a, a, add a drop box across the street and now I have a point to tie something into and do a, do a fix like that but we're gonna have to get to that point you know I've got other fixes on on end of right of ways that drop off into the bay down at this conduit that are completely now eroded away and eroding people's yards that I'm gonna have to try and fix. That's on Old Colony. I got a fix to do there. I've got fixes to do in a lot of spots that I, I don't know why they weren't taken care of. Again, I'm just finding them out, talking to residents, trying to get them corrected now. Again, again, it all depends on on how much money is available. If the money's not there, it's not getting done. It's that simple. And I try to tell people if I can do it and, and we can fix it again. If we're, if, it, if the DPW is fixing it, we're only paying right now. It's it's, it's basically materials because the labor is already included in, in what we're paying them to, there to be there anyway. If I have a contract to do it, it's going to cost us two or three times as much, which I'm trying not to have to do if we don't have to. So really, all right. So that was my presentation on, on capital and, and paving and things like that. Again, my capital budget, which has been, was approved, right, Nancy? From the, yes. yes. Two trucks at $118,000 a piece. A truck body for the 10-wheel dump truck, um, which was about 28,000, I believe, is in my budget. Uh, 23,000, I can't remember. 28. 28, and then the the 17,000 was for a the one-ton dump body um, to try and take care of that that problem. Then I should have a fleet that is all working again. Bill, on the paving budget, the two forty-five thousand. What has been the past budgets of the past years? Do you know, or two, is that up to me to look up? <laughs> I, I want to say our average is about two hundred and fifty. When I first got here, mm -hmm. um, I want to say it was two fifty. No money went into the budget last year. I think I have right now thirty thousand dollars left after paying what we did for four roads last year. Um, now, on that same paving budget, I have to buy my mix out of that to do all the road repairs we're doing. Um, and then anything else that, I, that, that, that we have to buy for materials that go in there, fat, filter fabric, things like that to fix the roads. Um, so I can't spend, again, I, if I get $250,000, i am not spending all of that on the roads. I have to save some for repairs we have to do for potholes, fixes on the road, take out, take out sections and redo sections that are just eaving or doing something that's, that's crazy. So what's the realistic figure for doing what you think has to be done for drainage? For drainage. The last ones that you know. Right now, just to fix the stuff in the north end of town, I think I put in my budget. Hold on. $120,000 when I did a budget estimate just to fix the things. Now that was in the north end of town thinking about, and that's that's $120,000 if I can't get to it all and I have to hire somebody. I'm, again, we're trying to do it in conjunction with the sewer work so that I don't have to pave the road twice. I want, I want to get the drainage in when the sewer's going in or get it in before the sewer goes in so that they pay for the, the roadway and I'm not, and the town doesn't have to pay for the roadway. I want to have them do it. Last one in, just like on Hearst Lane right now when they're putting the sewers down for the casino, I'm making them pay shoulder to shoulder. So Hearst and Lee completely will be new roads when they're all said and done. Right. So really, so I've got 120000 That doesn't include all these little fixes I've been finding all winter long, was when I did my budget again. But the little fixes, if you want to figure $1,200 to put a drop inlet and a little bit of pipe, you're probably looking at about $1,500 a, a, a whack to do each one of these little repairs I'm looking at. 
again, we're, we're not trying to, and then I haven't, I'm, I'm, I'm doing estimates right now on what the colonial, colonial terrorists or colonial, 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 colonial terrorists is going to take, try and take care of right now. How much is that going to fix? There's a slope and bank when I got to fix, and then there's a swale I got to install over there, because right now the, the piping is surcharging because there's so much water coming down that system, and it's going down a gentle, down the gentleman's driveway and eroding his entire back lawn. So, I'm trying to create that before that becomes a lawsuit with the town. One more question. Mm -hmm. Lens Pond. Yes. A couple of weeks ago, the Bay Road Road, everything was underwater. Correct. Is that the state's problem? Or? Um, I'll, I'll give you the history from what I found out. So, Lens Pond is actually owned by the residents around Lens Pond. Um, the church, is it church? Daniel church. Daniel Thank you. Daniel Church Estates, that whole drainage system dumps into Lentz Pond. There's a homeowners association that's supposed to be taking care of Lentz Pond and the dam. The big issue that, that happens there that's getting neglected is the outlet structure, which is on the left side, if you're standing on the dam looking at it, gets clogged and needs to be cleaned out. That the homeowners association is supposed to be doing. I've written numerous letters and it's not getting done. When that backs up, the water in the pond comes up. And the last thing we need is it to go over the top of that and have a huge dam failure. So right now, I have it on a list of things that once a week we go out and we check it. Again, it's not DPW's responsibility, it's theirs. But that outlet structure gets tied into the state drainage system, which is down on Main Road. There is a crossing where that crosses under Main Road that when you see it going over the road, that's because that drain is now blocked solid. So now that's on my list to keep tabs of it. I've been talking back and forth with Portsmouth to try and get them to fix that so that doesn't occur anymore because if we can fix the drain on Maine so that the water doesn't block it and doesn't black up then we don't have to worry about or they don't have to worry about fixing that road. I'm surprised they haven't come back to the town yet and asked us for to fix Maine Road. I'm waiting for that. I haven't seen that yet. But it's a it's a it's a catch 22 it seems, you know, we're trying to I'm trying to keep that on tab so it doesn't cross the dam. Trying to work with DOT so they don't, you know, they understand that they've got to fix that drain. It's not the town's responsibility. We don't we don't maintain Main Road. When you say you went to Portsmouth, Portsmouth Garage for DOT. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Um. Can the solicitor help you with that issue? The solicitor, you know, the solicitor does know about that issue. That's this issue goes back to two administrators ago, and that's when I was first so pulled into it. So assessing fines and that type of thing. I has I don't know if he's going to that point, but I think something's got to be done. Um, the problem right now, I understand, is that the Daniel T. Church Estates doesn't think it's their responsibility for the dam. The three owners that are own right up that the dam is on their property have the had to register the dam. So now Daniel Church is fighting with in fighting with them, and it's become a, a legal nightmare. So again, I think we need to interject into it to stop the issue from happening. Yeah, to, to, to put some pressure on them. I think the solicitor could could assess fines if the town. Can, I don't know how the process is, but. Something could be done there. Bill, I have a question about the plows. Sure. I know we had those old plows that were stationary, didn't yeah. rotate side to side. So with these new plows? Oh, they'll, take have, they'll have controls up in the cockpit, and they'll be able to turn the blades and do things with them. I figured that, but mm -hmm. do they replace the ones that are stationary? So if I, if, if I get approval to buy two new plows at what I'm looking for, I'm going to take two of the 1992, the, the the oldest true plows we have, and I'm going to put them in the back. I'm not going to use them anymore. They were replaced two of the stationary plows. And then I will readjust which plow you use does which route, but that's that's what we have to work on after. That's all. That will give you a lot Correct. more. I mean, more. ultimately, my goal it, it, it would be to try and replace the, five, the four, at least the four, maybe five by that point, plows, so I get the worst off the system and now I don't want again it makes no sense to buy all plows and replace them in one year because then you're back to a problem later just you got to you know it, whether it's one plow in a couple of years or two more I don't know we'll, we'll cross that bridge I actually in my capital plan I think I've looked at buying two skipping year trying to buy two skip another year buy one more that you know to try and get the fleet back up I mean everyone else is not running 1992 plows so they will have actually the Portsmouth director was laughing when I was we were talking so what we have to work with that's what I try and work with right. but again it's it's not the, the newer plows it's not it's the issue when like that storm event uh, wasn't the big one it was the one before that probably early in December 
where it was icy, mm -hmm. it was it was snowy, it was we were sent out. I had seven plows done at one time. Mm -hmm. Sanding issues, pony motor issues, transmission problems in the older trucks. Um, there was a uh, I have. I had one truck the last storm where the actual sander broke free of the chassis and almost had the truck go right over. Um, safety, okay? I, 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 I don't even want to look at what would happen if I took these trucks down to the state. I don't. I don't want to look at if I took them to the state garage and have them inspected. I don't know how many of them would come back, you know. The, old, the newer stuff, yeah, that's fine. It's just, again, it, it, it's tough enough trying to do these, these the down with nine plows. If we, we, we're down seven, it makes it very tough to do the towns and nine plows. And when I call in my private vendors on any, any storm three inches or more, they don't have sanders. They just have a plow. So it, it kind of, you know, it makes it, it puts a strain on us trying to get them back up. Bill, I'm, I want to go back to sure. the fact that the council has approved, you, if I heard right, two new trucks. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, if I look on the handout of the uh, capital budget under fiscal year, 2019. So that's two dump trucks, plow and sanders, international Ford 650 for a total of 220,000. Correct. Okay. So that's Correct. what, and the council. Two, two, well, they approved 118 that, per, right? That's a tentative um, amount because we have to find out the financing of that. Right. Okay. The going to work on financing. So, but the, the fact that the trucks have been, have been mm -hmm. approved. The two hundred and twenty thousand is That's to be fine. determined. Correct. Right now, I have two quotes from. Uh, it's one hundred and eighteen for the truck, with the plow and the sander and, and everything. Right. The package. Okay. Thank you. And what was approved? Was it uh, the two trucks? And, uh, the so the body. Yeah. So so under my capital plan for this year, I I had proposed something different. We talked about when I had all the plow trucks early on. So. I changed that with the council. Now it was the two trucks. It was a it was a stone. Um, I had asked for a stainless steel body for the ten wheel dump truck and a, and a stainless steel body for the uh, a five fifty dump truck mm -hmm. the sander. We switched those to uh, stainless steel. I mean, sorry, not stainless steel, but regular standard steel bodies. With the life expectancy, the truck will probably be in the body it will be replacing will probably be at the time when they have to be replaced. Um, and that was what, what the council had agreed with, said if you can go with steel bodies, they would. So that's what's in my capital right now. Two bodies, which will get those two trucks back up and running, full 100%, and the two new plows, which I can hopefully retire to 1992 vehicles. So I should, I should be looking at this DPW capital sheet versus what was in the original budget. What was in the original budget. Right. The first uh, one, two, three, four items. Okay, now, on the original sheet, you were asking for, a, well, that was a tractor trailer rear suspension. Is right. that gone or still nope. approved? No, so what I ended up doing was, was flip-flopping. So in next year's budget, when I looked at a five-year plan, I had the trucks and the bodies in that year budget, and in this year budget, I had some smaller items. A, a, I had, a, had a, the, the rear suspension on the tractor trailer. I had the... Uh, skid steer I was looking for and I had a couple of other things making a smaller budget hoping I could get another year until maybe some casino money came in or something that would allow us to do what we need to except when I have to keep when I have keep like my first year a couple trucks went down we were okay things happened this year I just get more frequent frequency of breakdowns on the older vehicles it's just not um, it's getting problematic right now to keep things running um, so that's why we flip-flopped Okay, you'll have to bear with me here. So, uh, the town hall heating and air conditioning. That was uh, that was the town the former town administrators thought of trying to fix the fix this building. Yeah. So that's gone. Point. So okay. Yep. How about the tractor trailer rear suspension? That's in next year. That will be in next okay. year. Okay. So that's that's out of this that's year. That's out. Yep. Ten wheel dump body. That's that was that's still in it. Yep. That's, okay. That's yep. still in. That's the 10 wheel dump body, yep. And then how about the Bobcat? Bobcat's pushed into, ne we'll be, I agreed to push it into next year, hoping I can get a truck instead to plow. So the only thing that survived the original budget is the 10 wheel dump body. Correct. And then I've got to come over to this other sheet and look at 2019. Correct. 
but it's not two 10 wheel bodies, it's just one. Yeah. Uh, it, it didn't say, on the original, it didn't say whether it was one or two. Okay. All right, thank you. And a, a quick question, I, I guess it's more of the, the request from you looking at the drainage work, right, for the north end of Tiverton is 120,000 and then 553 right. for, um, for paving. Has the town council approved 300, that? 300, they're looking at a number of like 335 right now. As a, as a combined account. A combined restricted account for drainage and paving. For drainage and paving. Say, say that amount again. So they're they're looking for a combined restricted drainage and paving account of three hundred and thirty-five thousand. They haven't formally said that's that's what they tentatively cut it down to as they're looking through the rest of the budget. They just approved this stuff Tuesday night. So that's draining and, and paving, paving right. combined. I'm asking to combine the two accounts. So it gives me some flexibility to fix the drainage right. and not have money for paving if I can't really pave a road. I don't want to I don't like to do things twice. I don't want to waste the town's money in paving something that if the drainage isn't isn't gonna work, then the paving's not gonna work. So was one account, you can probably remember that, and there's always one account drainage and paving before, and for some reason it's separated. Hmm. Bill, if the, if the total number um, goes down, when you look at the plan that you have going across the years, is it the ones that are lower on the list for each year that might have a no for just <coughs> overlay that don't get done, or is it basically everything that you hope to do in 19, if you didn't get fully funded, uh, those pop, so do everything, does it shift around, no, so or what, is what, it, well, I know you're right. doing it regionally, that, that. Regionally, so what I'll do is I'll take, like, the first, what I proposed, and I'll look back, and I'll see, okay, what can I get done that's going to make best sense for the dollar, and I'll, I'll take the money that's been approved, and I'll apply it to that. Whatever doesn't get done, I'm going to push into the next year and I'll try and reformulate again it might make us move do a little here and then go to this section and do that but I'll, I'm gonna try and push it so that I'm trying to get the most I want to get the worst roads done first mm -hmm. but if it's a high traffic road for instance that gets a lot of use I want to get that done first again I'm not, I'll, I'll take a high traffic road over a smaller road again the homeowners probably not gonna be happy but if we're having all these problems on the high traffic roads I want to fix those first then go to the, the lower just makes makes sense for the way to the, not, I, don't, I don't want to waste dollars. Um, okay. I'm gonna gonna switch topics on you. Last year, there was a considerable amount of discussion about the uh, condition of uh, Pond Bridge Road bridge down in the south end of town. I, I don't see anything. Right. And Pond Bridge Road bridge is on the tip right now, so okay. it is on the state tip to be that. So there's going to be state money. Like right now, there's state money in this year's budget for uh, the roundabout and stone and the abutment project. That money is, is in the tip this year. Stone Bridge is in one year. I don't know if it's next year or the year after is scheduled. That's the money that's going to be used to fix the stone bridge. That means that's, that's on, the bridge, the Pond Bridge Road, right? That's not a state road. No, it's not, it's not a state road, but the, the good thing about the tip with the state, the, uh, the transportation funds, if we have a state project, I actually list it on the tip, and that's actually been on the tip now for a number of years. We recategorize, and I try to pull it for closer to get that fixed right now. It's in bad shape. I just put signs up there last year to reduce the weight limits on the bridge um, at the request of DOT, because again, they even though it's our bridge, they still inspect it. They still, they, and they, they're still technically responsible for it because it's a state bridge. Um, yes, it's our bridge. Yes, it's 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 in it's on our, one of our roads. But that money to fix that bridge is going to be coming out of the state tip. So that's why it's not. It, that's why I'm not yeah. proposing it anywhere in our budget right now. Right. One of the great mysteries of the process. Correct. Um, I just I just worry about the amount of traffic that goes across that bridge, particularly in the summer, 
uh, with Fogland Beach down there, Correct. becoming more and more popular every year, windsurfers and so on and so forth. Um, and I know that isn't heavy traffic, but right. it's, it's just a lot of traffic. A lot of traffic. I guess the, the DOT is telling me they're more worried about the truck traffic over that. So yeah. if it, again, I think they're due, it's due for inspection this spring. If it de it's degraded further, they'll maybe they limit, they won't allow truck traffic at all. Yeah, because they can go around. Right. If they have to go around, they go around. But that's the state makes that call again. That's that's their program there. I'm just kind of working with them. Is you know, hopefully, and if that has to get kicked up too, they will have to kick it up too. You know, if that's that bad. And last thing I want to do is really close the bridge out, and that we can't use that road anymore because that's a right. It's a thoroughfare down on Fogman Beach. Yep. Um, you said you're working with the sewer schedule. Um, is there somewhere we can see the sewer schedule, or what is that? Um, if you go to the Tiverton Wastewater District's website, okay. they have that right there. On okay. the, on there. Actually, I have a set of plans in my office if anyone would like to see them. I Thank do you. have what roads are on. I've listed the roads in my PowerPoint presentation. Again, that's not the sewer's not going on everywhere on those roads, but, but this year they'll be going so far up, and then the next phase they're going to be continuing. Up, <coughs> so. But I'm not planning, so those roads, yes, some of them are in bad condition. I'm not planning on touching those because I know sewers going in there this year and next year. So your list takes sewers into account, which is fine. Correct. Okay, my thank list, you. So anywhere that the Tivin and Wastewater is, is putting sewers, I'm not touching those roads. I will go in there and I'll fix the drainage and I'll put a patch, but knowing full well that they're going to be behind me putting sewers and disrupting it even further. And they're responsible to pave curb to curb. Okay. Um, there's, there's nothing accusatory in this. I, I'm just curious about um, the, the numbers. So you, you gave us comparative numbers with other towns mm -hmm. and just quickly looked at, so for example, Portsmouth has 34% more town roads and their road crew is 33% bigger, which is about what you would expect. Um, but if you look at their audit, their budget for DPW is only 7% more. And I actually checked their labor contracts too and they actually pay a little bit better. I'm just wondering if anything comes to mind immediately that would account for why the budget's so much similar for so many more, so much more. I don't know. I mean, I, again, I, I, they didn't give me budget numbers, so mm -hmm. I, I can't. You, you probably have more. You have more information than I do. Mm -hmm. um, I can look further. I was just looking at size of complement, crew complement, road size, trying to do a comparison that way. I wasn't looking at what their budget was compared to what. And again, I was just looking at what do they spend? What do they typically spend on roads compared to what do we spend on roads? Um, I was doing the more, uh, comparison more there, not looking at how much do we spend per dollar per person. I wasn't going that far. Okay. Along those lines, um, I was on East Main Road today, and there's very bad potholes on Portsmouth East Main Road. Okay. So just letting you know. And an another comment on the chart, uh, some of these towns have, Warren has higher tax uh, per thousand than we do. Um, Bristol has really high taxes. It's something we don't want to go to. So. Just, just a comment. Nothing to say that you don't need what you need, you know. Okay. But I mean, again, I'm not complaining about the size of the force. I mean, <laughs> would I like a couple? I would, so what I, what I would really like is another mechanic, given the amount of down stuff that's coming down. But you know, it's not in the cards. It's not in the cards. I do have a part-time mechanic. I'm trying to. One of the issues, and as you go through the budget, you'll see there's a quite an increase in the in the wages. That's not that's not related to. Uh, there is a. I think there is there are. Two percent or one and a half percent increase for the for them this year, but the issue with that is, and I kind of explained it in my backup. Um, the the former administrator did the budget last year. He made a mistake. There was a complete mistake. I was twenty eight thousand dollars in the hole when I started the budget this year on my labor because he didn't account for things. He didn't account for my part time mechanic. He didn't account for the right rates for my guys. He didn't account for a lot. So I had to find money in my budget to make up for the twenty eight thousand. So the number I'm asking for this year seems to be a lot more than a one and a half percent increase, but it's not. It's it's the corrected budget for the people we have, with the, including the one and a half percent increase or whatever. That I can't I, again. I don't have the contract or in, but that's what what it was. This is kind of a different kind of question um, on the sand, getting the sand into the trucks. And I don't know much about this, but is there any way you can have a conveyor system coming out from the? where the sand is stored and, and then just goes straight into the trucks rather than having to have a vehicle? I'm just asking the question. <laughs> um, don't they do that? So okay. There, there is, but I, I, right now I don't believe, I don't know if I have electricity over in the building mm, that, type the of thing. Build that would be able to run the conveyor. 
But it's an, I mean, it's a possibility. I like um, to think outside the box sometimes. Just, yeah, but I, I think you need to pay. But I still have to be fed by a person. Correct. You're going to have to fed by, or you'd have to create a conveyor system on the floor. Auto sensor. That would actually, <laughs> the sand would have to come in, conveyor would load it to the, to the, to the, the, Top. the, the other conveyor and shoot it to the trucks. Mm -hmm. And you would still need a truck to push it to keep, keep doing the sand in it. So I don't know if it could mm -hmm. completely eliminate that. Okay. I mean, we have the loader. We use the loader for a lot of other things than just loading trucks. So okay. It's there. Okay, that it's, makes me feel better. Thanks. And during a storm event, I'm not. It's 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 if the mechanics is my mechanics the one that's loading the trucks. So it's so if there's nothing broken down, he's actually loading the vehicles, um, because not every one of my drivers right now um, can load their truck own truck. There's only um, I have thrill. Uh, I think one of the questions that came out last year was there wasn't a lot of turnover. Well, I've now lost. Um, I've lost four people in the last year, um, two to retirement, two for other reasons. Um, I've hired now three people at the lower end of the of the tadpole. They're just truck drivers. Um, what has that done? Well, it's changed my longevity huge. It dropped my longevity because the new guys do not get longevity in our contracts. Um, my numbers have come down. Um, I still have the same number of personnel. Um, but now I'm at, I have more truck drivers than I do operators. So that actually brings my wages down a little bit too. Mm -hmm. um, it's just how it worked, uh, how it worked its way out. And, and you guys are the ones who plow the sand from Fogland, right? Correct. So okay. that's, we have to actually send the loader summer, down for that. Summer task. We actually have to send the loader down for that because that's how bad it gets okay. down to Fogland. Okay. Thank you. Last year there was some discussion the sidewalks in North Devon mm -hmm. and whether you had to clear them and you needed a snowboard. Never happened in our So last so the state passed a wonderful new uh, law that puts the uh, puts the sidewalks in all of Tiverton technically in our responsibility to take care of. Um, snowblower um, Snowblower well, is it's not a, probably not a big enough snowblower to walk behind that we could do sidewalks in Tiverton. One of the things I was is why I had the skid steer in. There's an attachment for a snowblower and a and a uh, one of the attachments I would get would be a snowblower that I could actually after we finish the roads put someone in the skid steer. He drives down the sidewalks and he clears them with the snowblower with the skid steer. Um, I know in my town we have a little one that does that does the exact same thing. Um, and Middletown, I just heard that they're trying something new again after I created this budget. They actually have an attachment that they put on their grass cutter um, that on the arm that can go over like a snowblower and try and clear sidewalks. Um, our snowblower is old. <laughs> I don't know if I can get an attachment for that to work to change that out. I'm going to look into it and see if it's a possibility. Again, I still would like to get a skid steer. There are so many things that I could wish that if I had it, I could be doing right now. One of the things I want to get it, it, with the skid steer, just I'll bring it up now, is is I'd like to get a, a, a um, milling attachment for it so I can actually go out and do a nice cut and put a nice patch in so that we're not creating speed bumps all over town when we do our patches. It's just, it's just something would be nice. I'd like to get a York rake because we're always asked to take care of the beaches and rake the sand. Okay, yeah, we'll put that on. I do that. Get a broom attachment. Get a cutter, brush cutter attachment so I can help out doing the slopes at the landfill. Get the snowblower attachment so that I can do what we need to do on sidewalks and things like that. It'd be just, it, it's just a versatile little tool that would be nice to have at the, at the, at the facility. Is a skid steer? That's the skid steer, yes. Is that the same thing as a bobcat? Yes, it is. Okay. I guess it's been in the budget now for three years. It was next, but again, I'll push it. I'll see if I can push it in the air. I, I, at this point, there's a greater need to have a dump truck snowplow that's more reliable than what we have. So, any other questions for Mr. Anderson? I didn't know if you had any other questions on the budget itself or, or for me or, or in the operational side. Mm -hmm. Things I should bring to your attention as you're going through it. Yeah, um, what's going to cost you for a new garage? Yeah, probably like, I think I got a price of like $3 million to build a new garage. Jeez. Right. And to fix the back wall? That will fix, and to fix the back wall, um, I'll try and do whatever I is using. That was so, which brings up a point. All right, so one of the things I noticed in the budget of, of DPW was the fact that, um, again, this is the first time I put together. I put together the budget based on, on 
real numbers. I can honestly tell you I don't know how they did it in prior years. I can't find out anywhere in files on how they came up with the numbers they did. And I'm thinking it was the dartboard method that they threw a dart and whatever lever it landed on, that was the number they asked for. I actually came up in my budget, I don't know if you've gotten it in their Excel spreadsheets with backup. I went back years and looked at things. I looked at accounts, what we bought, what we went through. I just try to rationalize it. Why, why are we spending this money? It's, it, I try and treat it like mine. If it's my money, I'm not going to spend it on things I don't need. Uh, one of the things I found out that we have an account called office supplies. Well, there were things being bought under office supplies that are not office supplies, like training, like uh, clothing, like uh, tools for things. I'm like, again, it's no one's. That's how it was always done. So I've broken it out this year, and you'll see it in the budget. There's, I've tried to move accounts to and, and put the monies in it based on what I saw was in the budgets. Yes, we do need training for the guys. I do need there are there are certain credits that they have to get for some of their licenses. I have to get some for mine. That was that, you know, there should be a continuing education classes. There should be things like that. It, it's, it shouldn't be under office supplies because I, I can't understand why I do. So I've broken it out this year. Sub construction supplies, things like stop signs, tape measures, um, things to fix buildings, which I don't have. Like for instance, the salt shed, the wheels and everything and, and the hinges are rotted. That's not in my budget. I don't know where to put it in my budget because it's, it's not really a capital expense. It's about $2,000. I'll try and find money somewhere to pay for that. But again, one of the things that's happened over the years, which, which again, I don't understand why, we've been spending roughly $88,000 a year on, on just parts and things to keep the fleet, the aging fleet I have going. Um, okay, but when you drop it to 80 this year, when I dropped it to 80 in this year's budget, it's going to hurt me come, come June. I mean, I may just have to, okay, park that. I can't use that now. I don't have the money to fix it. Um, the, all the stuff I've had to fix on the trucks right now, that's really, it's hurt me, you know. If it keeps snowing, we've spent, we've spent a good deal of, uh, I've, I've had to buy a lot of sand and salt. Um, we are at, <coughs> budgets this year, I think we're at $30,000 left for sand and salt from 90. Um, I'm okay on the other things. My overtime's a little up. Um, on things, but that's because we took on leaf and yard waste off the vendor. So, and it's cheaper for us to do it than it is for the vendor to do it. So we, we've been doing that. But I had to roll into Saturdays to get the whole town picked up a little over time. I've spent roughly about $14,000 this year just in, in overtime related to storms, snowstorms. That, and if then we also had that big, that mini hurricane I'm gonna call that came through, we spent a little bit of overtime on that as well. Uh, on parts, uh, yep. same with the older vehicles. Can you get used parts for the older vehicles? We do buy used parts. We, we don't buy all new parts. Okay. Um, right now, the one bad part about parts is the FL80s and the 8000s, the old 92 vehicles. We can't get parts for those anymore. We're actually on eBay looking for things. Yeah. No, no, because they don't make the parts anymore. The trucks are so old. Ford auctions, doesn't. anything, nothing? We're on, we're on eBay <laughs> and auctions trying to find okay. parts. Okay. Just for pedals, for things like, you know, we'll make parts. We've actually, some of the sanders, they don't make the sanders anymore. We're fabricating shafts and spinners and things, which costs more money to fabricate parts than it does to buy a part. Again, again, it's an aging fleet. They don't make them anymore. We're just we're trying to hold on and do what we can. But if we cut back on that budget, I can't. There's going to come a point where we just can't fix something. This is actually for um, Nancy when she comes back. The last um, uh, budget that we have it was the handed out was the 11 so um, almost uh, a month ago are there obviously the the far right column with the um, town administrator town council those have all changed is that a fair they changed on Tuesday mm -hmm. so I yeah, do I have it on my laptop but I haven't printed out because we have meetings Wednesday and tonight so yeah. But yes, by next week I will have you uh, another an update. Because I don't change it until they vote on it. Mm -hmm. And they, the first time they met, they didn't take any votes. Okay. But Tuesday night they did, and basically the votes, they, they actually approved a lot, but as it stated here, the changes did come in uh, Mr. Ehrlich's face. And he's discussed that tonight with you. The drainage and paving is what is the standard mm -hmm. right now. Dump body is twenty-eight thousand, or one one dump body is. I had fifteen thousand. I heard them say seventeen tonight. So yeah, I don't. One of us. Well, it, it 
was one of the whatever number they voted right. Yeah. They now they're still looking at the final numbers on my operational side because they're trying to bring this stuff down. So I, I don't can't tell you where they stand on this. Okay, because that to me is like one of the, the questions if we're looking as we have a column on this which is uh, your assessment um, in terms of the operational side of things and then the town administrator slash council and the far right column and those are not numbers because to me one of the things the values of having the department heads come in is to get some assessment of um, here's what you would like in your professional judgment to get town council is balancing many things and we have to then balance to say on what we feel but it would seem it's premature right now as so if I go through and say I'm trying to look at the column that says department head and then look at the column TA in terms of town administrator slash council is that right I mean my numbers are my are what I put under obviously the director and that's back big dot big yeah. there's a backup for every one of those numbers yeah. the town administrator was the former town administrator who sat with me and says well we got to cut that okay but you know, but again, what he a lot, what, a lot, what he was doing was comparing it to last year. My problem with comparing it to last year is, is there's no rhyme or reason why. I, I can't figure figure out for the life of me where they came up with the numbers. So I, it's tough for me to compare to last year. And I know for a fact there were a lot of errors in what what they did last year, from what I've been able to find as I was putting this year's budget together. Mm -hmm. Again, twenty eight thousand dollars in the hole. I hadn't started the year yet with sal just just in salaries alone. My last one is dated February 6th, which is that's the date of that. Mm -hmm. So I could probably email it to you and then I'll put it out. And I don't know, I, I guess we can, I can ask and you tell me it's not fair, but looking at the, when you look at the operational budget, there's certain things that, that are easy that are contractual in terms of wages and you kind of go, okay, and there was a mistake um, in terms of the, um, the way things were counted, but there's, there's judgments that are here that will be in the in the approved ones that asking you is to say can you get the work done um, if it were um, if if we approve the town council budget so really and I mean to me looking at where are the biggest discrepancies between what you think um, you would or what you what you want and then where the town council town administrator is coming in so the town council did go through each and every line item with each department head, yep. and they come to terms with, well, you know, we need this as a priority of that, because they're looking at it holistically, too, when they hear all the other departments. Mm -hmm. But they did do an awful lot of voting, too. Okay, okay. It, it didn't change a lot of the operational budget. Do you have a question on that body? Did they go to the stall for it? Yes. <coughs> When Phil, when when <coughs> you received your instructions to put your budget together for the coming year, what were there, were there any parameters given in um, terms of the town administrator knew that the because we had discussions, he knew that last year's budget there was no public works director at the time when the budget was as I started I think two weeks or a week before I sat in front of you at the time. And, and I, I reviewed the budget. I'm like, well, I don't know. That doesn't make sense, that number and things like that. But at that point, it was already approved by the council in front of you when we were doing this. Um, he said to me, put together what you think you would need, you know, but you have backup for it. So that's what I did. And that's how I came up with my numbers. Now, again, I understand that cuts will be, there will be cuts and there will be things that I'll have to live with, and, that, and that's fine. Um, I just thought, you know, I put a stab at, you know, I looked at what the last number was, and, then, and I'm like, Okay, that's what they approved last year, but we keep spending this. What do I? What are we spending that on? So I trickled in and I was looking, and I'm like, okay, that doesn't look like I can do without. So I need that. Or I'd look at it and say, okay, well maybe we can take an average. If it was three, I did a lot of that too to try and come up with a number that actually means something. Um, the drainage numbers I put together estimates myself, obviously, and paving mm -hmm. that's based on our bids. Um, something new things again. I tried to break out what was in a wrong account and make a new account, and so you'll see that here. Um, I tried to put my numbers for like my parts back up to where it was at, but again, if that's going to get cut, that's more than what was approved last year. I understand that, and 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 when I sat with the town administrator, he's like, well, that's all, and they kept comparing it to last year. I'm like, 
well, fine, but if last year's numbers weren't realistic, well, you're going to keep comparing me to that. I said, okay. Then I'll try and def uh, so I, I put together a budget I can defend. Mm -hmm. That's what I can defend. If you tell me we got to cut it down, we cut it down. I understand that. Right. But I'm t I guess part of where, where I'm looking is if you um, sand salt and gravel, um, right. you appropriated this current fiscal year, there's 90 in there. If you say we've got 30 left, let's right. hope it doesn't snow right too much. And you, your judgment based on averages and all would say 105,000 is a number you're more comfortable with. And that's how, how did I come up with that? So I took, I look back at five, last five years worth of, of, of storms, mm -hmm. 12, 13 being a very high year. That's the year 14, 15 we had the, the bad storms. Last year and the year before that, not too many. I looked at the number of storm events. I looked at everything, and I tried to have a rolling average. Now I have a rolling average, and that's the rolling average that I used over five years. I didn't take, a, I didn't assume we were going to have a bad winter like we had in 12, 13. I took a rolling average. Now, does that mean that that 12, 13 has a little bit of effect in it? Sure, but you know what's it's based on something. So next year, when I plug this year's numbers in, I'll actually continue having a five-year average, and that's how I came up with the number. Like he, that's one of the things the town administrator said to me. You didn't round it. I'm like, I don't want to round it. That's the average. I mean, it is what it is. That's what I try to come up with. If you look so going down that there's a, a, a engineering consulting services of yes. four thousand. And then there, there's a zero. I guess part of my question would be is, is that if, you, if we think about the drainage and some of the other things we're doing, is if you need um, a, a, um, a licensed engineer, do you have that certification? But yeah. not being in a bind where there's things that we're, we're appropriating money, and then on the operational side of things, there isn't the funding for it and we can't do it. So here, right. here's 40 so, grand saying, in your judgment, this is something we need. Well, the $40,000 came out of a discussion between the billing official, the, the town administrator, and myself. We were discussing how really there's no, there's no consultant who's on an on-call service to help the town if we needed something done. Let's assume I have a catastrophe, I need a consulting engineer. All right. So he asked me and looked at it, well, put, 40, put as a placeholder 40. We'll put a, we, we talked about a number of 20 to 40, and, and he said, just hold 40 for now, and then he cut it to nothing when we saw how much, mm -hmm. and that's fine. Not having, again, I don't have a consultant now. I'm dealing with, the, so if there's a drainage design, I'm doing the engineering. I hand the, the sheet to my guys, the sketches, and they're going to go out and they're going to install it, and that's what they're doing. Um, if I need help, like, for instance, on projects like where the town has to oversee the roundabout, not DOT, so I'm doing that. But I can't be there 100% of the time. So I have Stair Engineering doing that. Twin Rivers paying for that right now. So Stair is working for us. <coughs> so just like on the, the Stone Bridge abutment, I have to oversee that for the town as well. OK, fine. But I can't spend 100% of my time there. There's just not enough time in the day to do that. So I have Felch Engineering, who, who the DOT is paying for that, to oversee that and report to me and do things like that. So yes, it's nice to have a consultant. But when you don't have the money, you just can't do it. it it's me. I mean, again, the planning board has a consultant to help them do, do review work on, on projects as well as I'm reviewing things. I spend some time afterwards and I spend and I review things because, again, I'm the one that's going to have to accept the road at the end or the drainage system or whatever. And I, you know, I used to be a consultant with Swainell. They're out there looking to, yeah, that's okay. Well, they're not the ones that have to deal with it at the end. I have to. So sure. I always put my two cents. So, yeah, there's times when you need consultants and there's times when you don't. And but again, if there a major catastrophe comes up and I need a consultant, well, I'm going to go in front of the council and I have to ask for an emergency now because mm -hmm. we have to get this taken care of. You mean like a hurricane? If a hurricane, hurricane happens, or, you know, does the state step in? That's the yeah, that if a hurricane came through, right? That's a different what? question. But the council did thoroughly discuss this, and because Mr. Anderson is an engineer, and that's what he wanted when we hired him. On the things like the casino, the roundabout, and all, they have to, Twin Rivers will pay for that uh, mm -hmm. for four weeks or whatever it is. And like you said, the state is going to pay for the uh, one for the government. But certainly there's going to be some part, perhaps, that um, Mr. Anderson's engineering degree isn't going to cover, and he may need to go out to consult it. But we thought it'd be better to handle that as it comes. It has not arisen there yet. But if it does, we'll have to handle it when it comes. It would be nice to have a town engineer besides the DPW director, but we don't have that position. We 
kind of incorporated it. And that right now is a luxury that comes to people from the field. Any other questions for Mr. Anderson? Just had a quick question on the, uh, the engineering portion of that. Other public works departments around the state, do you know if their heads are also engineers or if that's a requirement or? Some, most, most public works in the, t in the state are, have, have an engineer in there in the town because like for instance, East Greenwich has a public works director who also serves as the town engineer like me. However, in East Greenwich, they also have an assistant town engineer. That's all they do. This is so it works for the, D under the DPW and works with the planning board and this board and that board, you know. Okay. In a sense, we don't have the luxury here. Again, I serve as, as both. Yeah. I do as what I can. Which is fantastic. We're getting a huge bang for the buck. Right. My concern, though, is liability-wise, we look at this number of 40000 That's jump change to have an outside person help you on something that may end up costing the town a liability down the road. So they would end up sharing that liability or eating it versus the town. Mm -hmm. so, thank you. Do you get compensated for all these extra meetings you go to? No. It's all part of your salary? So I get paid a salary like every town employee does, and I, I know my salary is based on 40 hours of work week, and I'm telling you, I don't work 40 hours a week. No, I know that. A lot of people don't. So. <laughs> but I'm not complaining about it. It's just, you know, I do track my hours on a timesheet every week. So. Any other questions? Okay. Uh, we reserve the right to recall you. No problem. <laughs> but uh, aside from that, we thank you very much for your time. Thank I apologize you. for not being able to show the PowerPoint. I worked hard. My son actually helped me with it, so I want to thank him. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take it easy, go home. Hmm? Take it easy, go home. <laughs> So the next item is update site visits and scheduling. And I understand that Mike was doing that mm -hmm. and he's not here. Mm -hmm. uh, I did not receive any communication from him about that. He let me know he wasn't going to be here. So. Um, I do not believe that he did set anything up yet. Well, if he did, we don't know. So we have no update on site visits and scheduling. Review and approval of minute. Try that again. Review and approval of meeting minutes. Okay, so the only ones that I brought were the um, January 18th ones. We had actually already approved these, and then Mike noted an error. It was in attendance. Um, I do have copies. He had he had noted that. Mr. Paul was absent when he was actually in attendance. So he redid those minutes and reprinted them and brought them here, or asked me to bring them here tonight to, um, to re-vote on them. And that's the only change, was just adding Mr. Paul in attendance for the January 18th. I did not bring the other minutes with me. Okay, now Mike, Mike did send out an email. Um, I don't know that anybody's had a chance to print them and look at them. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll say that uh, we have not. So, distribution of documents as available. So can, I, can I just do, make a motion yep. to approve the, the January 18th amended minutes? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? I've got a couple other sets of documents here uh, having to do with the backup book, actually. Uh, I'm gonna, uh, this is for the economic development.
And I've also got the Harbor Masters. Now, Nancy, is this an update or is this the original? They just submitted them. Okay. So the this is the new. The Economic Development and the Harbor Master just submitted them. The uh, stuff from the DPW director was just in addition to So this this would supplant anything that was in the yeah. original handout. Let's just to give you better information on the okay. street because of the cost. So this this one we shouldn't look at it as a backup addition. We should look at it as an addition to the master municipal budget. Correct? Um, who was that on the DPW? No, oh. Harbor Master. Harbor Master, yes. yes. I don't you, we're believe shy one. Yeah. He hadn't originally submitted anything. I think the prior administrator just kind of plugged in his numbers. Yeah. But now he just submitted it. Okay. Does anybody else have anything they want to distribute for the public record? Anybody have any other? Seeing none, I would look for a motion to adjourn. Make that motion. Thank you.